to my surprise, people are still talking about One Night at Flumpty's even after all this time. I'm not really sure why. It could be partly because of the silly One Week at Flumpty's joke animations that I've been making for the past three years and uploading on April 1st. Or it could be because Five Nights at Freddy's seems to be making kind of a resurgence. I don't know whether that's because of the AR game or because of speculation about the movie or something. I really have no idea. I haven't been paying much attention, but... I have been contacted a number of times with just questions about the backstory of the Flumpty characters and what could be considered lore or canon or whatnot, and I kind of want to clear some of that up because I think because Flumpty is associated so much with Five Nights at Freddy's that people are looking at it the same way that they look at Freddy's when I feel like maybe they shouldn't. So I just wanted to share my feelings on that. I'll start by talking about the comic that my friends and I made prior to my making One Night at Flumpty's, which the brief explanation that I can give based on what I remember is that the comic started out with two characters, those characters being Blam and Kevin Jr., who was the alternate timeline or alternate universe or future or something version of Blam. I don't remember the details. And they were really the only two main characters. For a while, we were trying to develop some kind of actual story with these characters that made some degree of sense. But after a while, I think I just got tired of trying to make sense of everything, and that's why I invented and incorporated Flumpty Bumpty, this egg who is immune to the plot and can transcend time and space. I plopped him in the comic to completely derail the plot, and it never came back. <laughs> Like, I was doing everything in my power to prevent the comic from making sense, while at the same time, one of my friends was trying to salvage the plot as much as possible, trying to apply logic to all these illogical things that were happening, and I just didn't see the point. And I bring that up not just because people have asked about the comic, but also because that dynamic that we had is very reminiscent of what I feel like is going on right now. When the joke idea was brought up that Flumpty could be infused into some kind of Five Nights at Freddy's style game, I rolled with the joke with the very same mentality that I had with the comic, which was, I don't want this to make sense. I like this better when it doesn't make sense. And I legitimately didn't think very many people would play it, but once I put the game on Game Jolt, it got a lot of attention. When I felt inspired to make the second game, I basically retconned the eyes that were on the floor in the first game and turned them into eyesore in the second game. And because I had basically just invented this new character, I decided to give them a little bit of an explanation in the ending of Hard Boiled Mode, which was that the eyesore is made up of Flumpty's past victims, because I thought, you know, that's kind of a creepy detail that might be fun to put in. My intent was not to flesh anything out, haha! <laughs> Um, I just wanted to keep the story really simple and add a little bit of creep factor, and that was that. It was only after I started seeing people criticize the Flumpty games for not having enough lore that I thought to myself, maybe I should try to force in some lore to satisfy people and see what happens. What happened was, I started developing a game called One Week at Flumpty's, and I think you know what happened with that. I already explained my general thought process with that game in the Sad Fate of One Week at Flumpty's video, which no longer exists on my channel, but it is still on YouTube. I can say with strong confidence that I will never make the game that I described in that video, and I also do not consider any part of it canon. My heart wasn't in it because I was focusing on the story and not at all on the gameplay, which is the polar opposite mindset that I had with the two games before it and it felt very disingenuous of me to try to turn the series into something that I firmly believed it wasn't. When I made that really stupid One Week at Flumpty's animation that I uploaded on April 1st, it was intended to be a prank, but I also declared it the official One Week at Flumpty's, and that part is not an April Fool's joke. That is still true. It is 100% more a representation of what Flumpty is to me than the game was. That also goes for the One Week at Flumpty's 2 and 3 animations, which weren't even really intended to be pranks. I just uploaded them on April 1st because I felt like celebrating a silly day with silly videos. At this point, the name of the animated series doesn't even make sense. It's called One Week at Flumpty's, but does it even take place over the course of a week? Probably not. 
Some people have asked why characters like Grunkfest the Clown and the Red Man haven't shown up in the one week at Flumpty's animations, and it's because, despite the title of being very similar, I don't think of them as being in the same continuity as One Night at Flumpty's, or even really being related in any way. They are only meant to be goofy shenanigans between Flumpty and Blam, not too different from the shenanigans that ensued in the comic that my friends and I made. A comic which also didn't have Grunkfists or the Red Man or the Beaver or any of those characters, they didn't even exist yet. They were made solely for the games, and that is where they will stay. And I know a lot of people want concrete, in-universe answers to questions like, how old is Birthday Boy Blam? Where did Grunkfist the Clown come from? Why does the beaver sometimes have knives for feet? How come in the Game Over Easy screens your eyes are prepared like eggs when the eyesore has all of his eyes intact when he's made of the past victims? How was Flumpty made? Who is Golden Flumpty? The long and the short of it is, One Night at Flumpty's does not have lore. It just doesn't. There is no deeper meaning, no rich history that can somehow be explained in the comics or the animations. The characters have no backstory whatsoever except for the things that are very briefly described in passing statements in-game. Like the Red Man drank lava and lived, kinda. The eyesore is made up of past victims. The beaver fell down the toilet and died. That's it? And those details have nothing to do with anything else. Like, it doesn't even matter if those things are true or not. In a completely literal sense, none of it is true. It's fiction. And the whole point of fiction is that it's not real, and it doesn't have to follow real-world logic. It's not going to be as intricate as real life, and we shouldn't expect it to be. Maybe it's different with making a mockumentary or writing historical fiction or something along those lines, but Flumpty is immune to the plot. Because I don't feel like there needs to be a plot. What you see is what you get. And I think that's a good enough place to move on to another topic that has baffled a number of people, which would be Flumpty's grave. I released an image a long time ago stating that Flumpty had canonically died and lost his immunity to the plot. First thing you have to realize is I was in a bad mood that day. <laughs> I was kind of in a bad mood that whole month for reasons mostly pertaining to Flumpty and Freddy, but also a few things that were happening in my life at the same time. I made that image in an attempt to get people to stop asking me to finish the One Week at Flumpty's game that I cancelled, and uh, evidently it didn't work because people still ask me that, but yeah, that picture was one in a series of poor decisions that I made around that time. The question is, is it still canon? Apparently not, because the text on the side says something about me never making anything related to Flumpty ever again, and I've made three animations and some various doodles that involve Flumpty since then, so... Logic would denote that if it was ever canon, it's been retconned. I don't always see retconning as a bad thing. If it wasn't for retconning, the eyesore wouldn't exist. Now, all of this is not to say that I will never make a game that has some kind of a deeper story to it with details that matter. That is something I would like to do someday, but I also don't know if it will happen because I've determined I work much better if I don't design a game around a story. But at least in regards to Flumpties, there is no lore, there's not supposed to be any lore, and looking for it and trying to make sense of the canon is a lost cause that I don't really recommend. That said, I don't mind if people have headcanons for the characters or for the universe that the game takes place in. That's fine. You will never get a clear in-universe answer from me about why the owl wasn't in the first game, or what the characters' voices are, even whether the monsters are Flumpty's friends. Because I don't know. And I also don't really care. <laughs> if I'm being totally honest, I just don't. I don't feel like I need to make up answers to satisfy people's questions anymore. If I had answers, I might share them, but I don't. If One Night at Flumpty's had a box, like the one in Five Nights at Freddy's 4, that box would be empty, except for what you put into it. Because the answers to those questions are your fiction, and they can be whatever you want. I'll miss you.